It's just beautiful. It looks like a wedding cake almost, the basilica. Another beautiful cathedral called Cathedral de San Francisco. Take the gondola, Cerro San Bernardo, up to the viewpoint. You look out across the city and then you've got the Andes on the other side. We went to our very first piña. It was the best atmosphere. We went to um, the Vieja Estación. The food was really good as well. We tried some uh, different foods that we've not tried before. And we even had a uh, government official come on the bus looking for us. We're Craig and Kirsty, a full-time travel couple sharing our adventures here on YouTube. We upload new travel content every week from different parts of the world. Right now, we're making our way through the entire country of Argentina and exploring everything it has to offer. If you enjoy seeing new places and real experiences, please subscribe and welcome to the adventures of Tide Not Travellers. Hi everyone and welcome to our latest video in Argentina. So as well as hiring a car and disappearing all of out into the nature that surrounds this incredible city, we are actually going to show you the city of Salta itself. We spent a few days doing some things and the city is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's really beautiful, very stereotypically Argentinian and it's very kind of deserty in that northwestern part of Argentina. So we took another long distance bus journey through the night from Cordoba to Salta and arrived bleary eyed um, to our beautiful Airbnb, oh, which was so in a nice tall apartment in sort of the northern part of the city. Yeah, and we had a swimming pool. Yeah, a rooftop swimming <laughs> pool as well. And Salta is spectacular. It's kind of surrounded by mountains, the Andes to the west. Beautiful, beautiful setting. Yeah, so we were pretty lucky with the weather. Um, we spent a few weeks in Salta actually overall, including our times with the car disappearing off into the crazy wilderness in the desert. Yeah, the time of year that we were visiting Salta, it wasn't the height of summer, but it was kind of very deserty kind of conditions. So when the sun was out, it was really nice and hot, but as soon as the sun went down, it got a bit chilly. We spent the first few days just relaxing and getting over the bus lag <laughs> <laughs> again. And what we kind of do is get ourselves settled. We might need to do a bit of work and then go out and scout the city and try and find what tours we need to do. And we knew Salta was going to be a little bit more tricky than other places we visited in Argentina logistically, purely because everything or most of the things you need to see are quite long drives outside the city. And as you may have seen already from our previous videos, it's not that cheap or easy to hire cars in Argentina. Yeah, we get a lot of questions about car hire in Argentina, as if we have some kind of magic uh, wand or magic trick <laughs> that means we've hired them in, in any different way. We haven't. We've been paying a fortune for really basic cars because that's how it goes here yeah. in Argentina. And as we're learning, it's how it goes in the rest of South America. But we're going to do a video at some point of uh, the, the things to love and hate about Argentina. And we'll give you some more information about that. So stay tuned for that one as well. Yeah, so in our time in Salta, we hired two different cars and did two different trips. One was to the southwest where we did uh, Los Cordones, Cachi, down to Cavajate. So it was the Route of 40 and Route of 68, which was absolutely stunning. The geology and the landscapes and the desert landscape was just absolutely stunning. Yeah. And then that was over two days. We kind of wish we had done it over three days. And we also did a second two day trip where we hired another car and drove to the north of Salta to the Hohoi region where we explored the desert towns of Tilcara and Humahuaca. We went to the stunning 14 color mountain. And then on the second day, we drove to high altitude um, where we went to visit the third largest salt pan in the world called Salinas Grandes. Check those videos out. They're already on our channel. But today's video is all about the city center of Salta. We spent some time exploring the city itself as well as hiring cars and disappearing out of the city. So we found some stunning buildings, incredible food spots here in Salta, and friendly people as always here in Argentina. So the main hub of the city of Salta is Plaza 9 de Julio and it's got beautiful architecture surrounding the main square. It's all colonial style and you also have the stunning Salta City Cathedral, the main basilica, which is huge. All around the edge you've got these beautiful orange trees and there's a lot of places just to sit and grab a coffee and just watch the world go by. And there's a nice fountain and statue right in the middle of the square as well. Yeah, it's just beautiful. It looks like a wedding cake almost, the basilica. It's like pale pink and pale yellow and it's just 
on the day we were there at least it was sunny and there was the doggos just chilling in the square and some people relaxing definitely some uh, vacation vibes happening there <laughs> that's something we've absolutely loved about argentina as well they all have a main square yeah. and there's just a lovely family atmosphere there just with people hanging out and just watching the world go by it's hard not to join in yeah <laughs> we've got things to do in filming and, and sights to see and we're like we just want to relax here in the square so, yeah and also, just one block to the east, you have another beautiful cathedral called Cathedral de San Francisco, which is, again, very um, ornate and very colonial looking. It's got beautiful yellow and red colours, and it's very narrow and tall. Yeah. And again, with all this, you've got the stunning background of um, the mountains surrounding the city. Yeah, that one literally does it like a three-tiered wedding cake, because it goes up yeah. in three levels of just incredible intricate architecture so yeah absolutely Definitely stunning style going on there and you can go in both of them as well and what we did was we went to the city center and just off one of the streets to the south you have the salted tourist information center we went in there they provided us with maps they were so sweet and helpful there was this young girl who spoke fantastic english yeah. and also on that street you have loads of shops that you can go into and discuss and haggle people down for um, tours around the area yeah, so as well as the Tourist Information Centre, along that main square, you've got all the tourist places where you can book so many tours. We were like looking at all of them and wanting to do all of them. And that's on top of us doing a lot of the attractions ourselves driving. There were still more things we could have done, but you know, money and time <laughs> means you can't do everything. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's a lot to be done in this area. Also, just a quick note, when we were at the Tourist Information Centre speaking to this super friendly lady, she told us that if you're hiring a car and you're driving these regions, you need to register. Uh, with this phone number for safety because of course if you've seen our videos you'll see how crazy those drives were and you're out in the middle of nowhere yeah. and on one of the occasions we almost ended up with a dodgy car that would very likely have broken down <laughs> on that road so i can see why you have to register for your safety so yeah i highly recommend going to the tourist information center and getting a bit of info before you head off in your hire car if that's what you're doing top tip right there and another thing that we highly recommend if you're here in Salta, as well as just chilling and taking in the vibes of the square, is to take the gondola Cerro San Bernardo up to the viewpoint, which we did just before sunset. And it was beautiful to see all this cosmopolitan city life and then go up this lovely mass of greenery and just relax up there with the lovely Salta sign and then just take in all the hues across the sky and see it the city stunning. lights and watch yeah. the, the day turn into night and all the piñas come to life down there below. Yeah. And then we uh, got ourselves down there and joined in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a stunning viewpoint. So you look out across the city and then you've got the Andes on the other side of the city and just watching the sun set behind the mountains on the other side. You've got a Salta sign up there as well. So everyone's up there taking pictures. There's also um, some restaurants and things up there as well with stunning views, um, taking it all in. So yeah, highly recommend going up just before sunset. So when we got back down from the gondola, we went to our very first piña after being told by many people uh, that we need to do a piña while we are in Salta. We didn't know what one is. And for those of you that don't know what one is, uh, basically it's just dinner, folklore dancing, and just everything very Spanish and Argentinian <laughs> we didn't understand a word of what was going on because they were all singing and speaking in Spanish. We were definitely the only English people in the uh, restaurant. We know this because they did a poll of where everyone was from and we kind of sheepishly put our hands up. And the, the guy on the table next to us figured out we were English. I can't think how. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, these guys are English! And I was like, oh, don't, because then they, the people are going to talk to us and they're going to find out how bad my Spanish is. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the best atmosphere. We went to um, the Vieja Estación. I think that's it's amazing. How, I think that's how you say it, which I, I believe is one of the more touristy um, ones, but it was just a beautiful building and just the dancers were so enthusiastic. <laughs>
imagine how incredible it would be if you actually understood what they were singing. But we just enjoyed it for the um, atmosphere and just just how real it was. And the food was really good as well. Yeah. Tried some uh, different foods that we've not tried before. And yeah, it was it, you kind of all very squished in together. It's very friendly. It was just a really authentic night, an authentic experience in Argentina. We left it late to go to our first piña because yeah. Salta's our last stop um, on our tour around Argentina. But we were sat next to another young couple. Well, they threw us under the bus when they said, these, these guys are from England. So we were full of a room of Argentinians. And we were like, oh no, how are we going to be received? But just like throughout Argentina, everyone was so friendly. Yeah, so the heritage of this part of Argentina is quite railway oriented. And where this nightlife area of um, Salta is located, it's quite close to the main train station where you can get the train to the clouds. It's on a street, I think it's pronounced Balcarche. Yeah. We walked around that area during the day and you wouldn't think anything goes on there. No. But come <laughs> so the night time, it's all open yeah. and really lively. There's people dancing in the street. So many bars to choose from and so many piñas. It's just fantastic. So if we were to go back to Salta, something we really wanted to do was the train de las Nude. But it was more cost on top of the hire cars and seeing Salta itself. Yeah. Something else that kind of put us off was it was a long bus journey to where you get the train from and then you go on the train and it goes over this classic looking American yeah. bridge spanning this valley. Just the iron structure of this huge bridge. It looks incredible. We'd love to go back and do that. Yeah. Something else I really wanted to do was there's this very unique place a long way to the west of Salta. It's almost on the border with Chile, but it's like a two day drive just to get to this place called Cono de Arita. Um, which is like this mountain in a perfect conical volcano shape. Um, and the landscape looks unbelievable out there. It's like being on the moon. That was like a four day trip, two days to get there and two days back. But that is something we'd want to do if we went back. Yeah, can't do everything. It's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, um, yeah, with a lot of these trips, you've got to take uh, buses. And if you hadn't noticed already, we're a little bit bust out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Traveling for this long in Argentina means you have to do a little longer since buses. And we're Europeans. We're not used to doing buses for more than three hours, four hours. Well, so 20, exactly. Hours. <laughs> we, we now consider anything under 10. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a shift in mindset. But Salter takes some serious planning is what we've found. It really does. Top tip, if you're coming to Salter, Give yourself some time to plan before and when you actually get here because having your feet on the ground and walking around and speaking to people is, especially yeah. in Argentina, it seems to be the way to figure things out. Yeah, absolutely. Us, at least. Get yourself on the Argentina Travel Facebook group, and ask WhatsApp. some questions on there, watch our videos, time <laughs> yeah, our travellers, yeah. but also get yourself a map. Yeah, go to the tourist information place, go to the different tour places and and get some quotes and ask questions. We wish the two drives we had done, we had done them over three days and two nights each. Yeah, but um, then again, that's but, the cost. Again, <clears throat> hiring a car for longer. So yeah. if you've got a lot of buddies you can split the cost with, great. Give yourself three days for each area. Anyway, so if like us, you have been in South America or the country of Argentina for a long time, um, you may uh, be craving some more sort of Westerner style food. And even in Salta, uh, we managed to find some incredible sort of Western gringo type food. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, not very cultural, I know, but you know, we did go to Pina, we did eat a lot of local food while we were there. You need a bit but, of both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you do just crave a little bit of that, you know, comfort that you're used to. We found this lovely um, co-working place. We actually found it on our last day. So after we checked all our bags out and we had, we had to just kill some time before our bus out of there. We had like the, a whole day to kill. We're like, where do we go? We need somewhere where we just keep our things safe and, and relax and get some work done and be productive and get some healthy food in us. So we, uh, yeah, we found a lovely place called uh, Trocadero, which is right in the center of Salta. So we dragged our bags uh, there and then just rested there for the day. Had amazing, um, healthy food and just yeah we just were like why vibe. didn't we find this place Sooner. before <laughs> yeah. it really wasn't that far from our apartment which yeah. actually our apartment was one of our favorites that we had throughout argentina yeah. so we were happy being there it was a beautiful apartment but yeah. we were like some days we were staying and working and it just would have been nice to have 
known that was there. Go to Trocadero because you can get yourself food there. They book tours, they give you information, they yeah. speak all languages. They were so friendly, real traveller vibe. Yeah. It? Something else we actually did one day was we got a taxi one afternoon over to San Lorenzo, which is just on the western side of the city. And there's a nice nature walk you can go on um, with a waterfall running through the centre. Oh. You can get horse rides. Um, there's loads of little market stalls. I forgot we did that. Um, yeah, we had chats with like friendly local people yeah. in English and Spanish who were on these stalls. And that... Bought myself a little poncho. <laughs> yeah, you did. Had to finally do that. That's, that's a nice little day out. I wouldn't say do that as one of your main things to do in Salta, but if you have a bit more time left day. over in Salta and you just feel like going somewhere nice for the afternoon, that's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Head over to San Lorenzo. We got a taxi. It took about 20 minutes and it was just a nice few hours. Yeah, out. we did it on a work day. So we left Salta on a high. We did everything from like cultural experiences, tried the local food, hang out, hung out with locals, spoke to uh, people in Spanish, attempted to. <laughs> <laughs> so met some really friendly people, uh, went to the viewpoint, saw the city centre, saw the surrounding regions. Yeah. Salta is amazing. <laughs> I can see why it's becoming so heavily marketed because yeah. there is so much to do in the whole region. And just as a final note on Salta, because it's a bigger city, there are plenty of Western unions in the city as well. We found a very good one inside a Kafour supermarket, which is just kind of to the south and slightly west of the main plaza, Plaza 9 de Julio. Um, we also used that supermarket because we found it had a lot of stuff that, that was suitable for what we needed. It was a nice big supermarket. And there was a big shopping centre just a few blocks to the east of our street called Alto Noah. It was a supermarket and shopping centre and it had loads of food outlets in there as well. And so if you just need to go somewhere where you can do a few things in one go, recommend going to there as well. As always, we paid for everything in cash while we were in Salta. And so we, were, we made multiple trips to this supermarket to, <laughs> to get the cash out, to get the blue dollar rate. If you don't know about that, check out our video uh, where we tell you how you can save half of your trip to Argentina. We've been travelling around Argentina for the first half of this year, so we certainly saved ourselves some money along the way. Even things like car hire, everything that actually the bigger the purchase, the more you need to use just cash. So I can't stress how much we get so many questions from people saying, why can't I use my card? I always use my card everywhere. So do we. We have traveller cards. We, we travel full time. Of course, we have all the cards that you can use around the world that save you money and stop you getting charges and things. We use that every single country. Argentina is the only country. I've been to over 50 countries now, and that's the only country we've had to do this. I have, however, heard rumours that there is um, a light at the end of the tunnel, because apparently there is now um, credit cards or some kind of card that tourists can use where they can access a the blue, blue rate. dollar card. Or that something. would be so helpful. We spent so much time and so much effort running around doing the blue dollar dance, as it's known over here. <laughs> well, trying to find Western yeah, Union, figuring queuing, it out, finding out they were closed, or finding out that they're completely closed down. Yeah, and it's just crazy. Or going to book a tour, uh, arriving in a new city, going to book a, a tour or a car hire, and then realizing, oh gosh, yeah, we, we're low on cash. We need to go and figure out that before we can come back here and then book this and of course you're doing it all on foot but as of the first half of 2022 it was still very much the same and everyone lines up at western union not because they're crazy you walk past when you first arrive you walk past like, why is everyone doing that a few weeks later you soon realize why <laughs> <laughs> so yeah sadly this is the end of our time in salta and the end of our time in argentina <laughs> I can't believe Unbelievable. it's it's insane. It's so sad. Like yeah. we've been traveling for a long time, but there's been a few times where we spent a long time in one country yeah. and Argentina has been one of those countries and we do not regret a second of it. Yeah, Argentina is an absolutely huge country and with the amount of time we had, we still didn't have time to see everything. There were places in between the stop-offs that we did make that we really wanted to see, but there's just not enough time for everything. Even we extended our visa um, at one point as well, and we still didn't have enough time. <laughs> we still literally left Argentina with like hours to spare. <laughs> it's classic us. And we even had a, a government official come on the bus looking for us to check we were leaving. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, they know. This guy was going up and down the bus checking everyone's passports and then he got to us and we realised it was us he was looking for. I was like, oh no, we're on the run. <laughs> yeah, and he was just like, very weird. And he said to us, you know you need to leave the country soon. And we were like, yeah, 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 we're, we're going, we promise okay, we're leaving. Honest, we're, we're leaving. <laughs> we're we leaving. Promise. Sorry, Mr. Military <laughs> <Yeah>. Man. <laughs> we're going, we're on our way. Well, he was friendly though. When we said, oh yeah, it's okay, we're literally crossing the border to 
mm mm. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Have a good journey. Thanks for visiting. Yeah. And then he turned all nice. I was like, oh, he's not so scary. Yeah. <laughs> so that is it for us from beautiful, incredible, stunning Argentina. Argentina. I can't it's think of any more adjectives. <laughs> it's got every, every single landscape going. Yeah. And although this is our final video, we are going to do a few roundup videos because we've got so many questions. People want to know more about car hire, uh, money, food and things. We're going to do another video on what it's like traveling in Argentina as a vegetarian and a meat eater. So we've kind of got you all covered on the food scene there. So yeah. don't worry, that's all upcoming. And then we will take you to our next country here in South America. If you go over to our Instagram, you'll know exactly where we are and what we've been doing. So there you go. <laughs> there it is. Head over there. But yeah, we hope you've enjoyed following us around Argentina. Stick with us to see where we go next and follow us around the rest of South America. And thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe so you can see where we head off to next. And check out the Patreon link below. It yes. really helps us. Yeah, thank you to all of our patrons. Adios Argentina. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching. Adios. Bye. <laughs> Join us next time as we talk about our food journey here in Argentina as a vegetarian and a non-vegetarian. If you can't wait that long, head over to our Instagram at Tie Not Travelers or for exclusive behind the scenes content, we'd love you to join us on Patreon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Another must do thing that we recommend in Salta is to take the lovely chairlift up. Gondola. Gondola. <laughs> <laughs> Just taking in the vibes of Salta is to take the gondola, which is Chero Alto. Boy, we went to the Hohoi. And we did another two day trip, no, which is Salinas Grandes. But those videos are already on our channel, so.